Mary and that we trust him as Lord and as Christ and Savior now, today, uh, so that you too can live in eternity with him. All right, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord again on this um, special day. This is the Lord's day. This is the day he made, and uh, we will rejoice in it. And so we are looking forward to the Lord to see us in the next couple of minutes. But I do want to remind you of, uh, of some things that are coming up. I know some of you here that you know, for the first time. So it's good for all of us to be back. So I just want to remind you to bring our service this evening. At uh, 7 p.m., come on out and be a part of that. A lot of persons are not involved in services on Sunday evening anymore, but nevertheless, uh, as our custom is to be on Sunday this evening, that's what we do as well. Come out and see that we continue with our prayer meeting, Bible study, amen. Men are always to pray, and women are always to pray, and about the faith. Prayer changes things, prayer solves problems, uh, prayer moves the heart and the heart of God. So we want to encourage you to bring somebody with you. A prayer meeting this coming Sunday, I mean this coming Wednesday night, and let's present our needs before the Lord. And as you can see, there's a lot of people on the service this morning. Uh, so we'll pray for them, pray for uh, Brother Kendall and his family. They're traveling to Canada. Uh, so be with them, pray the Lord will be with them as they go on to take the Jonathan go to school. I spoke to them, so we pray for him. Pray that the Lord will take him down in his life and pray for the Arthur, Emma, and Tusa, and those that are traveling as well. Pray the Lord will take him down in their hearts and their lives. And of course, that does his family's uh, situation and uh, the pain that she experienced from time to time. We pray for them as well. And pray for Fred and Carla uh, as well as the children will be traveling. So we pray for them and the Lord's will will be done in their hearts. Their lives as well, Lord, will be with them. And I can also uh, remember uh, Sister McIntosh and Drew uh, Carla. I spoke to Carla this past week, and we are making plans and arrangements for the funeral of her brother, um, Sister McIntosh, and her day. Uh, they attempted the other day on the 19th, and then it was set up for wanting to do the funeral at the end on the 19th. Because she requested, she wants to go at 2 o'clock in the evening. So we pray for this family as they deal with the passing of the loved one. Pray the Lord will find ways to strength unto them. And remember, prayer also remember those who are of an age and are seniors in our church. Pray for them and move their hands and pray for them. Pray for uh, Sister Mary and her husband and then also and the Sister Mary and Brother Mark, Sister Adrian and Brother Brother Mark and uh, Sister Martin and Brother Mark. Just continue to keep these individuals in prayer and also remember Denise. Uh, she's been gone for some time and we told her to stay in the doctors for about six weeks. So do pray for her. Pray that the Lord's will be done in her heart and in her life as well. And as we can, if you have a phone number, you know what's up works. And if you have an internet, you can see a message, send a message. But pray that the Lord's will be done in our heart. This morning. So let's keep those things uh, in mind. And then coming September 13th to the 17th, AJ James, along with Jan Milton, and a couple of more missionaries, uh, we're going to do a missions conference again on the 13th to the 17th. And so we're going to look forward to that. And missions is at the heart of God. And uh, we're going to ask this for these two missionaries that we support. Uh, pray for this or this um, or that. And then the last Friday in the month of October, we want you to invite a friend. So we'll do some things to encourage you to bring a friend. The last Sunday in October, we want to fill the place. We call it Friend Day. We ask you to bring a friend with you to church. If all of us bring one person with us, that would be full house on the last Sunday in October. We give you that day to and then remember before you know it. We are already in one of August. I was inside Psalms the other day and I looked. We are already out of all of the stuff for October, for holiday, and all the stuff for all the holiday was already out. This is definitely all the things in there. But it won't be long before Christmas ornaments will be everywhere. And you'll be getting ready for the most 
was a very tight year this time. And so uh, we'll, uh, I'm going to Christmas play program. Hopefully, we get an early start on it. We have many children involved to perform as many, give us as many performances as possible we can. And then uh, our homecoming, and then we'll be like that the school, we'll expect the children to come back to school. And as we bring a lot, of, a lot of them will be invited to church, so that they get saved, family members get saved, and then back to Friday evenings, again, having science, most favorite time of the week, Monday to Friday, new meeting, they resume. Hopefully, we have to be able to get hundreds of young people to come on and celebrate on Friday evening, have a good old time, and new activities, fun, and fellowship on Friday night. And then we're looking forward to grand old time homecoming and everything for the Randy. I saw him in Nassau a few weeks ago. He told me already 30 of his people are planning on coming with him. And um, uh, he said a lot of carpenters and a lot of carpenters and different kind of workers will be coming and they'll be more than willing to help. So what they want to do, they want to be here from the 8th to the 14th and they want to take an extra day just to do some fun things and do they can. Uh, they want to do some mission work, so we have things at the house that need to do. We have things on the school that need to do. We want to use them and do things at the house to let them take care of all the material. They push the name down and you can see how we can get that to work out. I'm not saying they don't really finish, but at least they can give you a little hand with some of the things. Uh, but once you have the material, they have to be able to help you with. But that's homecoming 2024. And then Brother Randy told another gentleman about us, another pastor. He called me when we came out when I was away. He said that he might, he might come to Brother Randy as well and take care of the expenses. But they want to come and they want to come then, they want to come in the month of July and do completion by the school. So that's a very good idea. I have a date in homecoming 2024. It's going to be that I'm going to have a call in the church there about an hour and 45 minutes outside of Fort Lauderdale. I was thinking about coming to our, their friends with Brother Randy and they're thinking about coming. So we do all these things in prayer, pray for the school of the Lord's blessing to be able to communicate by action spiritually. Most important, spiritually, give us good godly people to work with and see many young people saved in the name of the name. And then remember, uh, as we pressed the for us to have a vacation, that we be launching of the choir. Now that the choir sends the pandemic, and they might be able to start the back so we need to put an announcement as it relates to that. Okay. So encourage many young and many young people and the folks that can sing to join the choir. As I uh, Sam said this morning, teamwork is the key. All of us put our hands and get our hands involved in the ministry. It becomes a lot easier work. You can't say I can't do it. <coughs> Never do you can't do it until you try. So if God lays something upon your heart, you want to get involved in the ministry, speak to pastor and get Busy, get moving, and, uh, um, and watch the Lord bless you as well. All right? For the Barry, come along and just want to speak to you for us. Let us pray. Saturday, Saturday at 4 o'clock. Saturday at 4 o'clock is so many. We had a very good time with the science mentioned yesterday. We'll be going into the Abbey Forest area again. Right? So the mic is coming, right? On the other side, of course, in the Michael's area, on corner. And so, if we can, 4 o'clock, we discovered that it's a little cooler at 4 o'clock than it is at 12 o'clock. All right? So, if you want you to come, knock on the doors. You know, I invite people to come to the house for old fashioned knocking on doors. It's still the way to get to get into the church, right? So, let's uh, come on out as many as we can and join us on Saturday, Lord's Day. Thank you, Brother Dave. This morning, scripture works is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 to 7. While we then are self in place, as well as for the media, picking up our scripture works. Um, this morning, Pastor Ben asked us if we had a good rest. The wife said she was on vacation, took vacation. And when she said that, I knew exactly what she meant, because we went to Nassau. 
It is sometimes said that nothing is certain in life except death and taxes. But that is not altogether true. We talk to President Trump. President Trump found a way around most of it of taxes. But if you try to get President Trump to disclose his tax return, the time he was elected, and even after he was ousted as president of the United States, he, I mean, they, they said they seen some of his tax figures, but it's not been made known. He's supposed to go to court uh, because of him not paying his taxes, but that has not happened yet. And so the only thing is you're sure of the debt. They deal with the deep taxes, but they can't do that. No one escaped that. George Bernard Shaw remarked, and I quote, the statistics, the statistics on death have not changed. One out of one person dies, end quote. Worldwide, there are approximately 56 million deaths each year. That works out to 4.7 million per month. 155,000 per day, 6,500 per hour, 107 per minute, 1.8 per second. I was watching a, a sitcom, Andy Griffith, one day. Andy Griffith showed some of you that watch that sitcom. And the little boy that known as Obi was asked to make a donation. To a going cause to, to a charity program. And uh, he did not make what his father thought he would have given. I think he gave one, one day. And I don't really remember exactly what he had in this little bank, but his father said, Boy, you can be sure he gave it more than a penny. So there's one and a half percent boy in the neighborhood that do not have what you have. And Obi said, Ask his dad, he said, Dad, he said, What a half a boy looks like. Because, you know, when I was getting these information, he said 1.8% of men died per second. I do not know what an 8% man looked like. But I know that's a ratio that they give as a percentage. They write, sufferless said, and I quote, of all the great wonders, none is greater than man. Only for death can he find no cure. For all the great wonders, none is greater than man. The only thing man cannot find a cure for is death. You know, Jesus, uh, there's a cure. Does death been the end? On this side of the grave, it seems as if death has won. Left to our observation, we do not know much beyond the familiar words of Ecclesiastes. Jesus that says, a time to be born and a time to die. All of us sitting here this morning have had the plague of death upon our families, upon our lives. You know what it is to shed a tear. You know what it is to lay at nights with a heavy heart because of death. There is an expectation for those who know Jesus Christ and their Lord and Savior to visit. If you visit a cemetery, you can tell the difference between the Christian and the non Christian. You say, How can? You can't. When you go to the cemetery, all look alike. On the headstone of the shade, it says, Tell me meet again. On the headstone of the lost, it says, Tell me meet again. You can't. Any it all determine something by reading the markers of the headstone by the good. And the bad lie buried inside of that throne. Six feet underground, there are they all moved together. 
Isn't it wonderful? Or ironic that when a person, when a skeleton is found, at first glance they cannot tell whether it's a male or female. They see a skeleton, all the sinews are gone, the nerves are gone, the muscles are gone, everything is gone. Just the moon lies there. Now they have to determine whether it's a male or a female. But to do that, then they have to do some forensic work. But you know, well, in some cases in here, I can tell you women to look at some of these other sisters' dress. But for the most part, when you see women, they know. Yeah. I was going to put something on social media, and one of the best things to come out, maybe after we touch that, I'm not going to call it what it is. And one of the men, one, one of the parliamentarians was giving his, his presentation to the House of Parliament. And the Speaker of the House being a woman. And I think they were addressing homosexuality in their classroom. And he said, I cannot, I'm not too good at drinking. But he had a little accent. He said, Madam Speaker, he said, Me and I look at you. And I look at these men. I can see how. A man could want to like another man. Then a woman is so beautiful. And the whole house is up. And that's the difference between a man and a woman. And so, when we die, we become different in the sense that one has gone to be with the Lord and one has gone to hell. There are all around us people, young and old, male and female, rich and poor, famous and infamous. Listen, church goers are none uh, church goers. They're all alive beneath the sword. Does death win in the end? The word of God is clear on that. Or I can say this what was said in the book of Luke, Gospel chapter 16. Remember, when it had to do with the rich man. And Lazarus, it says in verse number 25, And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things, and believe <coughs> and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Death makes a difference. Death is not the end. Death is not the end of the story for those who know God as their Lord and Savior. The Bible tells us what lies ahead for those who know Jesus Christ. And I thank God for that second Corinthians. I, we are here this morning as we read these verses and we discover many good truth that gives us hope as we face them as we, and we will face them. Oh, now, it is a part of the man wants to die but after this the judgment of the pastor as a whole is one of the most difficult among all the things all wrote. And yet once more we get uh, 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 the sense that Paul is dealing with the tragedy of death. Look at people all around me who were dying, who were dying. And many of them, you know, dealt with this enchantment. Many of them were in the trouble. And Paul was trying to encourage them. And so, he encouraged them by letting them know that what you have here will be a temporal structure. But there's a permanent structure prepared for everyone who will to be alone today. Even if we do not understand every detail, the first impression. It leads with us as we read the hope that is in Jesus Christ. You see, the end of earthly journey, the question is, what next? What next? Paul tells us in a pretty square language that we have nothing to fail. And no matter how we die or where, or, 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 or no matter what may be our physical, uh, our condition at the moment of death, we have a promise from God that death itself cannot break the soul. Why? Because of number one, the certainty of the resurrection. There is a guarantee that you and I, if we should die before Jesus return, we shall be resurrected. You know, first we want to say, whether you're saved or lost, you shall be resurrected. But to be resurrected unto life eternal and resurrected unto eternal damnation, where will you be? Death is not the end in any case. It says in verse number one, for we know that if our earthly house 
on this side of the mountain with us all. We have a living of God and also a living of the eternal in the heavens. Surely, the most important part of this verse is in fact three words, as I mentioned earlier. Now, we know that confronts everyone. You have to deal with it every day. No matter, no matter who you are, you have to deal with that. You might never want to think about death, but you better think about death till you're going to die. No one who reads these words can say with a certainty how much longer will I live? I know I've spoken with a man time after time, and he feels as if, you know, after this life is done, that's it. He believes he controls his destiny to a certain degree. One time, uh, uh, just a week ago, I was talking after I came back from the U.S., I called my brother, and he and I talked. I have a funeral for Dan and Andrews on the 12th of this month. My, one of my first cousins, he died. We were talking about the funeral, and then while we were talking, there was a lady that used to live with my mom. She passed away, and she told me, she said, uh, Susan also just passed away a couple of hours ago. And so we, we were talking, and we said, You know, death is short. No matter who you are, death is short. And as we talked, he said, oh, he said, you know, he said, uh, there is a man, uh, a, a friend of his, who worked for a company, and what happened, something he took, you know, every year he had to do a visit, the company pays for it. And so he left and he went to the United States to do his trip to visit. And when he was through getting his visit up and everything, they put it, they see everything in an envelope and they just didn't take back to his company that he worked for. He came back home. The company said, you have a good bit of help. You go to school for another year. You let him when he die. You see, being healthy does not mean that you're not going to die. He was healthy according to the doctors. But he died. You see, in fact, <coughs> eight months ago I celebrated 72 years of life in this on this earth. In the next four months, I'm hoping to celebrate 74 years. The odds they seem to be in my favor. But according to James 4 and 14, where are you gonna put you and you the more what is your life that you're gonna be for? Let it get for a little time and about to wait. There's no guarantee that I'm going to see my 74th birthday. My mother, not long ago, celebrated 100 years. Somebody said to me, come to me, a good boy, your mom will never be hurt in vain. But it's like, I don't know. Do you believe in 110 years old? I'm not looking forward to helping you. Is it impossible to not believe? But my dear beloved, I have been breathing more or less continually for 73.8 months. Cost me a fair it's free. But you know, if you start to have a little respiratory problem right now when you go to the hospital, the question they're going to ask you is if you have insurance. For them to give you a little bit of oxygen, it will cost you. Do you know you are breathing in this free oxygen from God? It costs you nothing. Every single breath is a gift from God. You're not giving another day, much less another year. The great researchers have a certain knowledge about. What happens? I mean, I'm after that. Yes, they assume a lot of things. The Bible tells us as to what happens after we die. Scientists have nothing useful to tell us. They cannot guarantee us nothing. We will not get answers from philosophy or from history as it relates to death. No man has died, come back, and tell the story of death, except for what we read in the Word of God in the Egypt of our cemetery. All you know for certain is that it is full of dead people. They were once alive. 
vile. God as he might regenerate. Get any understanding from them, the dead. Can I tell you what the experience is like? Their speculations, they're they're the revelation of the word of God. Paul said, There are some things you know for sure. One, that we are living in a temporal structure. Paul called it a tent. I believe you know what a tent is consists of. A tent is not something that is stationary. They said that what Abraham did in his lifetime, he just moved from place to place, driving stakes and pulling up stakes. I believe one of these days, you and I will pull up our stakes. Our bodies are intense. If we are out, then traveling is, the, our argument is traveling, if anybody out of a tent, First thing they start jumping down with those tents. Even if you have a little uh, 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 kind of strong uh, wind blowing, you got to secure the tent. The tent are not designed uh, uh, to take the, the, the battery of strong wind. They wear off fast, they sigh, they start, and they wrinkle, they, uh, 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 like our body, they creaks. Number one time, somebody asked Sister Lynn, she mentioned, what do you do with the kidney in, in the knee and stuff? She said, well, I need some WD-40. Mm -hmm. You see, these old joints get built out. I don't know about you, you are around 60 and above. I believe you have some aches. I believe you have some kidney in, in the joints. Some morning when I get out of bed, I got trouble to start up straight. I got to take my time. You know, I just don't jump up like I used to. There was a time when I used to jump on the bed, but how? When I jump up, just, I mean, I used to be just as straight as a pin. Now when I jump up, now I'm a routine of a person. <laughs> I'm an all kind of people. The old body, and I gotta hold on sometime and catch, um, um, you know, to, to make sure that I, that, that I don't stand up. You know, sometimes when I walk in, go into the bathroom or something, that's, you know, and my equilibrium is not as good as it used to be. I'm like an old caterpillar, I gotta get warm. You see, this old body is deteriorating. Gravity is putting the paths in different directions. There was a time when I had. What, what, what they call it, uh, no gallows. There was a time when I wanted to hear what I mean, it was nice and smooth. Oh, and I moved down, I was just, you know, that was good. There was a time when I mean, all the hair on my, on my hand was black. I look at them now, they're all white. It's changing. You see, the heart. It's slowing down, the eyes are growing dim. That's why I'm using it. The teeth is falling off. Now, you know, you have devastating all kind of money now. When we were in Texas the other day, I never seen more dentists off like I mean everywhere you look, there was a dentist office, they're doing implants. You know, dentists is becoming a thing obsolete now. They're trying to tell you to get implants so they can look right. They look natural. When we were in uh, St. Martin the other day, I was wondering why but the day took me and he went on. He said, you have to do this, do this. You could take him on those, uh, uh, you know, I just did slow things. He just slowed the pain up. <laughs> and I thought, finally, you got some implants. You know. But they got to eat. You know something? Then you will ask them. That's what that is. Our bones break, our muscles weaken, the body bulges in the wrong directions. We were like, oh, chest is now. <laughs> there was a time we used to play softball, but now we want the strongest softball hit on the ball field. I mean, when you swing that left, you know, you know it's a softball. When you swing that ball, when you see it, when, 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 when you see it, the ball from this side, when you see the ball, I mean, you gotta go the other way. I mean, you see it. Look at me just wait. The body changed. It ain't got that much no more. You know what happened? Gravitating to 
forth to pray. We brag about our strength. Yes, the time Michael the cold shells here dying. Sooner or later, we grow old and our bodies begin to break down. Eventually, they stop working all together. No more of vitamin C or cibarin keeps the insane can change that back. At best, we can only slow down. They said that the John James defied. Anybody, you still out the process. But I'm telling you, one of these days, the Lord, you're going to appeal, you're going to come on national television, and you say, This is my last game. I can't do it anymore. I can see you coming. He ain't what he used to be. Yes, he can still jump, still yet defy gravity as it relates to getting the ball in that little hoop. But I'm telling you, he is not what he used to be. I tell you, my dear beloved, this morning, that let me tell you something. You may slow down the aging process, but you will not stop it. As we age, we pay attention to things like diet and exercise. We've got weight watches like Jenny Craig, who curves. We've got uh, people who run, people who bite, you know, you know. They do all of these things trying to last longer. They said, that's the world of the world. He was a health freak. He had a boy's school. There were no um, uh, junk food on this. He would not allow good companies to put any vending machine on his property. He didn't believe in chocolate bars and and then the potato chips and said, no, if it ain't natural, it was not served in his guts. He died a young man. After eating all the healthy things. I'm not saying do not eat healthy, but I'm saying you cannot stop that. I recall the three men yet, some of you remember that word of Word of of the um, uh, of, of Billy Bites. There's so many people. You can go to the gym where you can begin exercise at 3 in the morning. If you want to, but they still die. You can still fall apart by eating the right exercise. This is all good, and I'm not against exercise because I do it. And for some of us, we should exercise. Paul said in 1 Timothy 4 8. What what are the exercise from the little? So there is some little profit in it, but you're gonna die anyhow. Exercise is good, nutrition is good. It may help you to live a little bit longer and a little bit more satisfactory life. But I've got a bad news for you. Your body won't last. Forever, your body must go back to the dust for which it came. You can eat all the low carb diet you can get your hand on the good amount of healthy ice cream and everything else. But to tell you something, you're still going to die. The body is still going to give out. Did you know your body disintegrates all the time? I mean, the cells of our body are actually programmed to die. Nine and twenty-seven. I quoted earlier. And as it is appointed of the man wants to die, but after this be done. The scientific term of this is apoptosis. Each day, an average adult loses fifty stone. Again, I got to tell you the truth. Fifty to seventy billion cells. The only cells that what they made of. You lose it about every day. Before the sun goes down the day, about between 50 and 70 billion of your cells will die. That's 350 billion cells a week. Dies. No wonder we need to lay down and take a nap. When those cells die, you don't have the same energy. We are falling apart second by second. 
Well, we are here right now, we are falling apart. There was a time when I had a pit in my back door. Somebody sent me a picture not long of me when I was about probably 19 or 20. Hold on, a girl walking down the street. Ah, oh. Man, when I look at that picture, you know what I see? Man, what an awesome thing that was. And now I look at that same picture. I look at that same person who's supposed to be in that picture. If you see that picture, that's not me. I don't know who that was. Compassion was nice. I mean, yeah, I, I know Bell Bottom was not the style anymore, but Bell Bottom was, I mean, I, was, I had the best looking Bell Bottom you ever seen. The best apple, I mean, my apple was manicurally right. I decided to let me go to see how we can do it. And what I see is we always get the studio ball. I'm telling you, you're losing it every day. You're dying every day. You want to trade in our tent for a building. Not being at hand. Think about the difference between a tent and a building. Tents are temporary structure. Tents are easy to turn down. A building is something strong. A building is made to stand the, uh, the, the, the age of time. I'm strong. Even though when we get out of traveling, what, what do we do with a building? We only we secure the entrance to the building itself. You don't put no piece of wood here and piece of wood on that side. Now, when I was a boy, the houses were made of wood. And I remember my dad used to go to the pine, to go to the pine yard and cut down pine tree. He would put one to this corner here, one to this corner here, one to that corner here. Hey, we're going to come to this beach. She can't go, one comes to that beach, she can't go. And I didn't see no sense in it, but now I see sense in it. Wow. About that. Because that wood could have gone down. But when you cut a foundation, when you put steel, when you put concrete, and all the other things, and that building is there, you expect that building to stand and sit down about the tide of time. Now, when they're doing inventors now, they said the projectile, they know how many miles it will be that window can stand. But the tent, 35, 40 miles per hour wind in that tent, if you ain't got that tie down right, that tent going, and anything beyond that, no matter how you tie it down, it's torn to be sure. So we will only one day tread in this tent for a building, by the someday we will give up our tent and replace it with a building made by God himself. This one part tells us that death is not the end. Death is not, a, 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 I would say, a, a, a reincarnation. Death is not. And you have to reach the death is the beginning. Death is not an, an, an annihilation. Death is the beginning. Death is not an exchange. Death is the beginning. I think this is a preaching, preaching bit. And oh, yesterday I preached up. So they were, somebody told them, say, old man, you're going to die. He said, you can't stretch me to death. So there was Christ in the dying game. When they were trading our broken down bodies for a new body, Paul says that the new body is from God. It is not made with hand, it is eternal in the heaven. It is, it is not a trading either. It is a heavenly gift. That's why he says, For we know we don't have to live in this tent much longer. Someday our tent will be replaced with a building. By God. Secondly, the nature of the resurrection, the resurrected body. Verse 2 through 4. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 2 through 4. For in this we grow earnestly desire to be good to the Father with our houses, <coughs> which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we should not be found naked. And we that are in this tabernacle to be grown, being burdened up. For that we would be unclothed. 
So go to the pan that must have been my discolored of, of life. Go to the coming day of resurrection in life. You may find three answers to these questions. One, he says, in verse 23, the so be that being clothed, he should not be found naked. It is like putting on an overcoat. When winter comes, we dress up. We put on different clothing. In spite of all the clothing we put on, we go look for a spell or a jacket. Under that jacket, there is a shirt. There's probably a, an athletic shirt, an under shirt, a t shirt, whatever. But over that, we put on a warm up piece of clothing. So this is what Paul is saying. Paul says, yes, we are clothed about with this tent, but there's coming a day when we will be covered up and put on an overcoat. Putting on an overcoat when Paul says we long to be clothed, he is using an unusual Greek verb that means something like to be um, uh, uh, a second piece of garment. It has the idea of putting on an overcoat which is literally a coat put over the body. That is the life that we get from God. Paul looks forward to the day when Christ returns and things are different. Things of himself. One of these days, Paul said, I know that I will be unclothed and I will be clothed in the And so then, for the child of God is not correct. Secondly, it is the answer to our groaning. Many of us go many, many, many things. My mother will have a child. That child goes to bed playing and singing and jumping and dancing. During the midnight hours, within the hours of the night, that child wakes up crying. That mother wakes up trying to see what makes that child cry. But do everything in her power to try to bring comfort and ease to that child. And the seemingly the more that mother do, the worse the child I do gets. Because that mother's heart to groan. Because that mother's heart to ache. On the day when I was a child, or the day I did the grief, or the abuse. I remember the mother's. My day, when they have little babies, they're crying a lot. They mix their milk and they get on a spoon full of gin and they throw the milk. They shake it up. Maybe they leave the little oxygen milk that and they try to get oxygen and alcohol. I didn't know it then. But know something. But the body is sweet. Don't even know what's wrong with our house. The drunken mind is sick. I remember that they used to do that, and that's the thing. No, they're sorry for something because they, they don't put it in the water. They may be still, but you know, the reason why they're sorry for something that was for some years. But I'm um, very good, you remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They used to get the very good, and they put it inside the water, and then some of you young ones, you know, whatever they did. Yeah. Anyway, they put that inside the milk, and they shake that up, and let them drink that. I think that would have been our goal, too. Whatever it is. I don't know, so I, I, I never read the instructions. I had no reason. But I can remember them doing these things. You know why? Because it made them to groom, it made them to take away their comfort. They want to make sure that their child have comfort. And that's what Paul is saying. He says, we groom in this body. We groom over so many different things. We groom because of what the friends we groom. Because of our bodies breaking down, we groom. Because of our marriages breaking up, we groom. Because of our children going astray, we groom. Because of our friendship, of our being disintegrated, our friends leaving us and disappointing us, we groom. Because we live in a fallen, mixed up, messed up, broken down world, we groom. Why? Because of some bad experiences. You never know what the next man or woman is going through, though. You see them walking, you see them smiling, but let me tell you that smile is only superficial. The hurt is in their heart. The pain is in their heart. You see, we groom. Let God tell us, come and man, those groanings will cease. No more cancer, no more abuse, no more hatred, no more arrogance, no more crime, sadness, night, sickness. No more of these things, I can tell you. I did not 
to realize how hard it is until the reason. But when I see, yes, I can only imagine what the next person is going through. But my wife crying for pain. I've never seen her cry for pain before. The first time. She never cried for pain. I'm not saying she never had pain. But it's so excruciating. She literally cried for hours. So much so that it made me cry. Boom. She was very good last night. She didn't see at all. That's not the first night. It's been going on now for months. Just one good night. Every now and again, I can catch a good nap. But I'd rather have a good night rest either because when she do not rest, I do not rest. I can't rest. I don't want her to get up and get something that I can do until now I try. You know, if I see her, once she turned, I said, What you want? What you need? And she, she don't want me. She stopped. She want to make sure that I'm okay. She said, two of us can't be sick. Man. No more sickness. That is a hope that removes our deepest spell. A memorial of the prayers associated with death. I believe it's dying alone and probably be forgotten. Just as though we never 
see, never seen the sea. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. God has guaranteed our future in the resurrection. We are saved by an eternal love. A love that will not let us go. Here then is a book of God. For anyone who has buried a loved one, anyone who has walked the train of the cemetery, you can go to the cemetery, take a long chair, put it there, get yourself some sandwiches, some ice cream. And you can lay there, like I tell you, you can live as long as you want. All you will see is death. All you will hear is death. There is no joyful stories in the grave dark world. But I'm telling you, one day the grave will burst open, Jesus Christ will come, and there will be joy, there will be praises. It will not be the same. You are saved by eternal love that will not let you go. So how do we know there is coming a day of resurrection? There are two solid truths. One, God raised his son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. He will raise his son, will also raise him to die. God, God did not leave his son in the grave. He will not abandon you and I because we have trusted in the son. He gave us the spirit of proof. Or of earnestness. Paul mentioned the second answer in verse 5. God gave us the spirit of earnest of the spirit. The word earnest has to do with it. We talk about it over here for a property or a house or a piece of land. As a matter of fact, do you know if somebody has a piece of real estate for sale and they have it on the market, you know how all of the cash on hand have if you are interested in a piece of real estate, they may ask for the 10% down. Do you know that 10% is not refundable? That 10% is for them to take it off the market so nobody else can come up and try to buy it. And so you go and you put down your 10% to secure it. Now they're giving you an extended time to bring in the rest of the money. But this is what the word earnest of the spirit means. It's a deposit. The spirit is a deposit that protects us, that gives us a guarantee. Some translation says a down payment. When you buy a house, you put down a sum of money called earnest money. So this is what happens. Yeah, we have the power of the Holy Spirit of God that gives us the guarantee that there is, it is a small amount that legally binds you to pay the full amount one day. One day, that spirit that came, that comforted, that came, that spirit that indwells us, that spirit of God, one day, he will drive us from this world and we will be changed. God signed John the dotted line and said, I will raise from the dead all who have trusted in my son and the power of my spirit and dwells them. My dear beloved, it is a good thing. It is done. God has signed the dotted line through the death of the son, through the resurrection of the son. He said, I will raise you from the dead as I did my son. What should this truth do for you and I? I think primarily it should change the way we look at death. If you were afraid to die, you need not be afraid to die. No, I am not saying that you can hold up your hand and say, I want to die. No, I'm not saying that. By the way, the requirement for the resurrection is that you got to die first. You cannot be resurrected if you do not. To be changed, you gotta get saved first. You gotta be changed if you don't get saved. Either or. He may come at any moment, I hope he does, but will uh, you be ready? Are you ready? So all the beloved angels will come, Lord Jesus.
religious. Someday, turn out, someday, you will die. But that's not the end. Whoever is around you at the moment, when you die, they will call you a Tishna and then go back to the back.
now you have an opportunity to do it and they want to. They do a forty us. You do not know Christ. You want to die. If you can trust him today, so what is it? Let me get back. Father, thank you again for your goodness and for your deeds. Thank you, God, for the word. Thank you, God, for the truth. Oh Lord, Father, I pray for that time and woman and young person who brought me to my Lord and Savior that they may come to trust you this day. Father, there be one in our midst. Lord, we don't know you. Maybe they have a fellowship with you. Lord, I pray that they may get things right. Lord, whether it is getting you trusted with your Lord and Savior, or whether it is getting your heart ready to be done, I pray, Lord, for your mercy, for your grace. And our God and our Father, I thank you for all that thou hast shown us in your word. God, may we not turn a deaf ear. But Father, may we follow our directions to the Lord and the Savior. Thank you, God, for the privilege that I trust you, trust you, Savior. That you may get the glory of honor out of our life for the country you live. In Christ the mighty name, let us shine. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Yea, indeed, I'm telling you her. Her stance is the same. She says, God, Jim, God, David's going to become the son for you. That you may have me as your Savior. Make your peace and experience life everlasting. Here he comes, he said. Thank you. 